Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Zatmi and today we're beginning the discussion of the scalp of your head and neck region. Um, so before I get started, uh, I request you all to subscribe to my channel for easy anatomy videos, conceptual anatomy. Uh, this is the channel for you. So let's get started. Uh, what is the scalp exactly? It's basically uh, the part which overlies your cranial vault. Now that is basically the roof of your um, entire skull. It's basically the entire like uh, connective tissue and the skin and everything that lies above that superior part of the skull. So the scalp is where your hair is coming from. The skin of the scalp is almost as thick as your palms and the soles. So firstly we need to talk about the extent of the scalp. Where does it extend from? So we all know this is the orbit in the front. Anteriorly, it extends from the supraorbital margins, all right, and here's your skull, all the way behind to the external occipital protuberance. Uh, this is basically uh, lying in your posterior part of the skull. You'll see in the occipital bone, there is a little bit of an elevation called the external occipital protuberance. So if this is this behind of your skull, the external occipital protuberance lies in the middle, and just next to the external occipital protuberance are the two superior knuckle lines. So coming from the supraorbital margin, going posteriorly to the external occipital protuberance along with the superior knuckle lines is the scalp, all right? This entire area above, obviously lying above the skull. And on either side is the superior temporal lines. So now what we need to know are the layers of the scalp. The best part about the scalp is that its layers are in its name. So the first layer of the scalp is the skin. The skin consists of uh, hair and it is very thick and it has multiple sweat glands and sebaceous glands, which is why uh, a lot of sebaceous cysts occur in the scalp, all right? Uh, after the skin, we have the next layer. It is from C, basically. After skin, we all know comes the superficial fascia. Uh, but the superficial fascia in case of the scalp consists of the connective tissue. And this connective tissue has many, many, many blood vessels. Therefore, any wounds of the scalp result in massive bleeding, profuse bleeding. Here comes your third layer. A. A is for the aponeurotic layer and this in the case of scalp this layer is very important because basically it is where the epicranial aponeurosis is lying epicranial aponeurosis now this is basically lying between the uh, two uh, muscle bellies of the occipitofrontalis muscle so let's talk about the occipitofrontalis muscle first name says it that it has two parts an occipital and a frontal part and between the two parts is the epicranial aponeurosis bridging this entire area uh, to join the two muscles. You can say it's like a tendon uh, between these two. So talk about the frontalis muscle first. Your frontalis muscle is originating from, it's coming from your eyelids and it's arising from the skin of this area. Not, it has no bony attachments. I want you to pay attention to that. It has, the frontalis has two very long and wide bellies and these are united in the median plane, all right? So these, uh, this is the frontalis muscle and posteriorly is the occipitalis muscle. These are also uh, two bellies, but they're short and they are separate from each other. And these arise from the external occipital protuberance from the posterior extent of the scalp, basically, and the two knuckle lines. And these two are joined together by the epicranial aponeurosis. Aponeurosis receives insertion of the frontalis muscle anteriorly and the occipital muscle posteriorly. Major function of this muscle is that it causes a raising of the eyebrows and wrinkling of the skin. All right, so your eyebrows are raised by this muscle because obviously a push is coming from all the way behind and it raises it and the wrinkling of your forehead skin occurs because it is attached to the skin. Uh, so remember this very well that it has no, anteriorly has no bony attachment. And apart from that, its uh, nerve supply is the frontalis part is supplied by the temporal branch of the facial nerve. The occipital muscle is supplied by the uh, posterior auricular branch of the facial nerve. Uh, moving on to the next layer. Uh, this is the layer which starts with an L. This is the loose areolar tissue. The loose areolar tissue lies immediately below the epicranial aponeurosis. So it is also known as subaponeurotic layer. Uh, the loose areolar layer is actually quite important because it is also known as the dangerous area of the scalp as it is where the emissary veins are running. And another reason why it's of importance is because it is also known as the safety layer that we'll talk about uh, when we discuss the clinicals. All right. So loose areolar layer is important. Um, then we have the final layer. It is known as the pericranium is obviously uh, the 
Just immediate to when the skull is about to begin, the periosteum of the skull, so the pericranium is the final layer, very closely attached to the sutures, loosely attached to the bones, but sutures and the part of the suture is very uh, firmly adherent to it. So these were the layers of the scalp. Uh, let's talk now about the nerve supply and the vascular supply of the scalp. Usually divide the scalp by these auricles or you can say the ears. These ears are going to divide how the anterior to this ear, the supply is derived and posterior to the ear, the supply is Right. Before I even get started with the uh, supplies, I just want you to remember one thing. Posterior to the ear, you're going to remember two words. These are the posterior auricular and the occipital. I mean, it makes complete sense, right? Because posterior to the auricle, posterior auricular and the occipital because this is the region of the occipital bone, right? There's a posterior part and this is the anterior part. Let's talk about the arterial supply first, all right? Uh, the arterial supply in front of the auricle is derived basically from the internal and the uh, external carotid arteries. Both are going to give their supplies. From the internal carotid artery, first come your supratrochlear and the supraorbital arteries. Coming from here, obviously, because they are lying above the orbit. Orbit is lying around here, right? So supraorbital, supratrochlear is medially and supraorbital, uh, more laterally. And these are coming from the internal carotid artery. And then comes your... Uh, around this area comes your superficial temporal artery because this is the area of temporal region. So obviously it's the superficial temporal artery. Now this is coming directly from the external carotid artery. And finally, these two names, I just want you to put them over here, posterior to the auricle. These are the posterior auricular artery and the occipital artery. These are going to be supplying the scalp behind the oracle right and these two are also coming from the external carotid artery so you can see how the scalp has very important uh, arteries supplying it and it is very rich in its uh, vessel supply now without further ado let's talk about the veins the veins are similar named veins and i'm going to draw the face from the side basically all the veins are of the same name as the arteries right so supratrochlear and the supraorbital veins they they unite at the medial angle of your uh, orbit to form the angular vein now the angular vein continues as the facial vein so this is a facial vein in front of your uh, ear the superficial temporal vein will come here it will join the maxillary vein which will be coming from the maxilla and when the superficial temporal joins the maxillary vein it forms the retromandibular vein why because mandible is lying around over here a retromandibular vein divides into an anterior division and a posterior division. The anterior division of the retromandibular vein will join with this. What is this? This is the facial vein coming from supraorbital supratrochlear vein. Uh, and when they bind, these two become the common facial vein, which drains into the internal jugular vein, the most important vein of the head and neck. The posterior division of the retromandibular vein, it joins with your posterior auricular vein right from here the posterior auricular vein is coming so it basically joins the posterior auricular vein these two become the external jugular vein and this drains eventually into the subclavian vein finally the occipital veins are just going to drain into the suboccipital venous plexus let's talk about the lymph nodes now the lymph node drainage is that anterior to the auricle area obviously there will be the preauricular lymph nodes and your parotid lymph nodes because your parotid gland lies around over here like uh, around over here just closed just in front of the auricular area so preauricular plus the parotid lymph node and posterior to the auricle what nodes the posterior auricular and the occipital node similar name all right that's why i'm saying remember these names for the posterior part of the auricle now we're going to talk about the nerve supply so once again, we're going to divide our scalp, anterior part and a posterior part. We're going to have a sensory supply, which means that uh, it carries sensation. So if I touch the scalp, a person will be able to feel it because of the sensory supply. And then there is a motor supply. Motor supply is how the scalp is going to uh, use its muscle to cause movement. So that's motor supply. Uh, just like the occipital frontalis muscle, the frontalis muscle was supplied by the temporal branch of the facial nerve and the occipital muscle was supplied by the posterior auricular branch of the facial nerve. Uh, similar to that, you're going to write scalp's motor supply is in front of the auricle. Its motor supply is the temporal branch of the facial nerve. Posterior to the auricle, its motor supply is the posterior auricular branch of the facial nerve. Now let's talk about the sensory supply of the scalp. In front of the auricle, there is going to be this nerve called the trigeminal nerve. It's the fifth cranial nerve. The trigeminal nerve is basically very important because this nerve gives three branches. These are the 
ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular branch. With its branches will supply the anterior part of the scalp. Similar to the uh, blood supply, these two are the supratrochlear and the supraorbital nerves. These are branches coming from the ophthalmic division of your trigeminal nerve. Next to nerve supply is the zygomaticotemporal nerve. The zygomaticotemporal nerve is coming from the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. All right. Then comes your auriculotemporal nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve is coming from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve. So these are the nerve supply, sensory nerve supply of the part of the scalp anterior to the auricle. Uh, posterior to the auricle, the nerve supply begins with the great auricular nerve. Then comes lesser occipital, the greater occipital. And finally, the third occipital nerve. This is the great auricular, the lesser occipital, the greater occipital, and the third occipital nerve. And this is a nerve, sensory nerve supply posterior to the auricle. We've discussed the nerve supply. A couple of important clinicals will be discussed. Uh, firstly, uh, the most important part is if there is any wound to the scalp, which is occurring transversely because the epicranial eponeurosis is going to be cut transversely. The wounds of the scalp are actually quite open. Very, uh, They gape when they're open. They have a large opening. The loose areolar tissue layer is known as the very dangerous area of the scalp because it has the emissary veins, which is basically connecting your extracranial veins to the intracranial veins. That's why if emissary vein has any infection caused by any uh, infection of the scalp, it can travel through the emissary vein inside your cranium, which can affect your meninges and the brain, right? And cause their infection, which is dangerous, right? The important part about the loose areolar uh, layer is that since the loose areolar layer is uh, lying be beneath the epicranial eponeurosis, this is the frontalis, this is the occipitalis. I told you guys to remember that the frontalis has no um, bony attachments. Therefore, any layer that is deep to the epicranial eponeurosis, if there's any kind of bleeding over here, the bleeding can go all the way down into your um, eyelids, into your uh, root of the nose and also into the eye causing black eye. All right, that's important. So any wounds of the scalp inside the loose areolar tissue, any kind of bleeding can result black eye because there is no attachment of the frontalis to uh, bones. And another important part is that it is also known as the safety layer. If there is any kind of bleeding, uh, since the bleeding will spread all over rather than staying localized in an area and causing a swelling and even compromising the brain, like because the swelling can also cause compression downwards, right? So rather than it staying in one area, it spreads into the entire scalp rather than uh, causing swelling in a localized area and can protect the brain. So that was all you needed to know for the scalp. I really hope I made it easy for you. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more conceptual anatomy videos. Until then, thank you so much for watching.